So there's a mutiny so bad at Scott Sports that the police are actually getting called? There's a lot that's happened over the past week and there's a lot to unpack. So let's get at it. So guys, if you haven't seen the news, there's been a lot going on at Scott Sports. So let's go ahead and look at the dates and see what happened. First off, on March 29th, Scott Sports Board of Directors replaced CEO Beat Zog to refresh Scott's development to become a world-class manufacturer in bikes and other outdoor categories. So I'm probably going to go ahead and butcher some of these names of these companies and people, but let's go ahead and get at it. The move comes after Yogon, a South Korean apparel brand that acquired the majority share in Scott Sports in 2015 from Zog, recently loaned its subsidiary 150 million Swiss francs, which is about $166 million. So after they released the CEO, they came out with a press release talking about the existing management and other employees of the company saying their commitment and professionalism will significantly benefit the company during this transition phase. Also, according to the release, the board of directors of Scott emphasized that the long-standing commitment of the majority shareholder Yongan to Scott remains central and is not called into question. So then that brings us to April 1st when Beat Zog, who has been the owner of Scott Sports since 1998, says he remains the brand's CEO, a minority shareholder, and chairman of its pair company board. Despite Despite the release that was released on Friday saying he wasn't. According to him, the announcement was made to destabilize the company and its employees. He said the announcement had been made via a PR agency that works for Scott's majority shareholder, not Scott Sports. And of course, the board of directors came back and said, we understand it may be difficult for Mr. Zog to accept his termination, but this is ultimately irrelevant as a matter of law. The ultimate decision of the body of the company is the board of directors and the board is clearly entitled to terminate the employment of the CEO. They ended the statement as say we have resolved to determinate Mr. Zog as CEO with immediate effect and that termination has been duly notified to Mr. Zog last week. As you will understand, the reasons that led to this termination cannot be disclosed at this stage. That's a pretty normal thing when you get rid of a CEO. There's not a lot of information that comes out. It's normally a, hey, see you later. Uh, sign this piece of paper saying you won't say anything. Zog did concede that Young Lung controls a majority of the board, but said that the board did not terminate him correct. So far, they did it wrong, and without elaborating, I have to keep this a secret for the time being. He then concluded that little interview by saying that Scott is facing all the major changes that we have seen with Trek and other brands that we've covered in the past, where they have far too much expensive inventory, and they're trying to cut costs and make changes to actually go with this new market that we're dealing with now. I'll link down in the description below, but we just made a video about what Trek is dealing with on their end, and we've covered this in several major areas over the past year. Now that brings us to the fun part, which is not fun for the employees. I don't mean to joke about it like I am, but at the same time, you don't hear about this happening very much in the biking industry or at companies in general, especially for it to make news like this. So on April 4th, the police were reportedly called to Scott headquarters in Switzerland on Wednesday to report what officials said was a dispute between managers. The police then go on to report that nothing serious happened. We intervened in a civil matter, a dispute between managers, and these type of case, the police are often called to the scene to find a way to open discussion and for people to understand each other, but there is no injured or anyone arrested. So basically what it sounds like happened is, is everything blew up in the office. He probably came into the office when he wasn't invited because he had been terminated. Now, the details behind that termination and what actually went through, we aren't aware of, but it sounds like he stormed back up to the office, forced his way in, started arguing, and someone called the police. So as you guys could tell, this is pretty nuts. I think a lot of the stress in the biking industry as they're trying to make changes to what's happening in the industry itself is really causing a lot of stress for not only employees, managers, but also top executives. There's a lot to deal with right now that we've already covered in the past, so I won't get into huge detail. You can watch the videos down linked in the description below. But stress is boiling over at this point as they're trying to find a way to navigate these changing market conditions that they really didn't see coming, but a lot of people did. So guys, I want to hear what you think down in the comment section below. Is this something you've heard about hearing in any other area of the industry? This is my first. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to Bike198 for more videos like this in the future. And until then, on to the next one. Thanks guys. See you.